Law, John, hey, congratulations for your film starring as Jerry himself. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. Hey, more of a congratulations. It's uh, being showcased at Slamdance this year, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world. Tell, tell us how you feel about that. We're pumped. You know, I think that, you know, this story is such a unique one. Uh, it's such an important one. And we're just really glad that we were able to make something that we're proud of creatively and, and feels like it can move audiences. So we're really glad to be able to share this with the world. Terrific. So tell, tell us first, how did you came across uh, Jerry's story to make this into the, a feature film? Yeah, you know, this is, it's, it, it's kind of a crazy story. You know, um, we, John and I have been working together for about a decade uh, as a sort of producer, director duo. And about a year and a half ago, I get a call from him and he just sounded frantic. And, you know, I was like, he, he said something crazy just happened. And I thought it was sort of just like a production snafu, lost a location or an actor's schedule got moved or something or other. And he's like, no, it has to do with my dad. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, he's just an ordinary retired immigrant guy living in Florida. And I said, uh, and this is the story that he was recruited by the Chinese police to be an undercover secret agent. So I was like, I'm like, I'm sorry, what did you say? And he's like, yes, undercover secret agent. And I was like, I I don't believe you. I can't believe what I'm hearing. And neither could John. So John's like, I need your help to fly down to Florida and help me figure out exactly what happened. So that sort of, be, that began the journey of what was just fact collecting. It was just like, let's just figure out what happened to John's father. And we got there, we sit him down. And the story that Jerry begins to tell us becomes more and more fantastical and unbelievable and just plain stranger than fiction. You know, he's, he, he tells us he's an agent for an international money laundering investigation. He's, he's going to his local bank and doing secret surveillance. He wore a wiretap to collect evidence from bank tellers and this entire time kept it secret from his family. And the story, the story keeps getting crazier from there, but we're going to kind of leave some things unsaid to allow the audience to kind of enjoy the film um, as a whole. But after hearing all of this, we decided that we we had to make this into a film. And, you know, we had begun the documentary process, but everything had already happened. How do you go and recreate that story? How do you go and and retell it? If it's a, you know, is it a scripted feature? Is it a narrative feature? If so, we have to get one of two Hollywood guys that can go play Jerry. And that's like one of them is maybe time off. You know, uh, but he's not going to pick up my phone call tomorrow to like make this film. So we decided to turn to John's father, Jerry, and ask him, would you like to play yourself? And he said, yes, only if it's a spy film, because I felt like Jason Bourne. I felt like James Bond throughout the entire process. And I want the audience to feel the same way, too. So. John and I decided, let's go make a doc that kind of feels like a spy film, but ultimately is about an immigrant that's sort of searching for the American dream. Wow, John, was it that e easy to convince your father? Well, I guess that is easy if if we watch the movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good one, Gig. Uh, yeah, I I don't, you know, there was, a, there was definitely moments while in the process of making it where, you know, we all, you know, everyone takes a step back and is like, you know, is this, this the right thing to do? Um, like, should we keep going? Uh, but yeah, I think very, very much so he was excited and just like ready to tell the story and to give us as much detail as possible. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it was very, very simple because, um, uh, in, in the end, like the, the truth was, uh gonna set him free and I, I think he he knew that we knew that and that was um just something to be excited about and uh yeah you're gonna have to watch the rest of the film to, to find out what i mean by that but yeah it's it, it was very very fun to to work on great tell, tell us the process of recreating the events for the film both realistically and fictionally at the same time yeah yeah, that, you know, that's a really fine line to tread. 
uh, we decided to sort of embark on this docufiction kind of hybrid uh, format because we felt like that was the most interesting way to tell the story. And it, and how, how many times has it been done that the subject of such a fantastical story gets to be themselves throughout the whole thing? And during the course of the interviews, we were just seeing how Jerry really had this, you know, this stage presence that isn't your average, you know, Asian dad. So we were like, let's give it a shot. Let's give him a chance to do this. Um, but, you know, in terms of the process, it was really getting the truth from Jerry first. And every conversation that he has with the Chinese police is real. It's all from his memory, exactly what he remembers them asking him to do and them, um, you know, what they said to him. So us sort of getting that as accurate as possible and recreating that was both a documentary challenge and a sort of fictional challenge because it involves acting, but also sort of sticking to what is true. And then the the idea of this, these surreal kind of filmmaking techniques that we applied was more about Jerry kind of describing to us how it felt for him to go through the process and how he wanted the audience to feel. So it was really kind of walking this fine line between docu and fiction. And for me and John as filmmakers, you know, John watching his father and me watching my friend's father play himself, you know, through every take, through every scene, through every experience. I was like, am I watching, am I behind the camera watching real life? Because he's going through it again and it's, he's the guy, he's not an actor. So for us, it was almost this journey in discovering what is documentary and what is fiction as we are trying to deliver the audience the same thing. I think the 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 programmers can even decide <laughs> like whether it was a narrative or or documentary. They kind of let us kind of you know figure it out. Um, but yeah, I think through and through it was documentary. It was about you know true events. It was about it had the the, act, the actual subject, and we made sure that communication was. I think that was one of the biggest things to undertake, which was the communication between. I mean, not just being uh, his son, but also like the producer of the film to help him understand like what's going to happen as a result of making the film, what we needed to make the film, um, how Lawrence was, uh, Law was going to tell the story in a very uh, unorthodox way. Um, yeah. So, John, how... How 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 did you feel uh, rewatching this entire story, and how did your dad feel rewatching this story? Um, I think uh, so. I get emotional every time, uh, and I've watched it maybe like 40, 50 times now. <laughs> but it's uh it's yeah, it's it's an emotional story. I think watching it, even in the making of it, there would just be moments where um, I'd have to you know, go in, uh, uh, you know, into a corner and get emotional without letting the film crew know what was happening because it was, uh, it's a very personal story. Um, and, uh, as far as what Jerry, how Jerry feels, uh, he's going to be, I mean, he's just so excited and thrilled to be able to watch it with an audience at, in Park City. Like that's, that's going to be such a huge experience for him. Um, and uh, and we're bringing everyone, like uh, everyone in in the film, as in the family, uh, to to be there to support him. Well, I mean, uh, it actually fooled me when you know not reading the synopsis and what what I thought I was getting into uh, with this film because I actually thought it was a doc documentary. But when did you decide to uh, you know drop that facade? and go into, uh, you know, much more of the narrative uh, type of scenes. And, and were those uh, difficult decisions to make? Because uh, you, you sprinkled them all over the place. Yeah, you know, to be perfectly honest, there's a, there's like multiple layers of what is real in the film. And 
the sort of overarching format is that it's a film within a film. It's a narrative experience kind of bookended by the documentary of how does an immigrant dad kind of um, go through these events in his retirement and how does a family kind of support that immigrant dad. While we are doing that, throughout the film, there are so many shots and scenes that are just verite documentary, and you don't even know it because the 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 filmmaking language that we applied to that was to try to give you a cinematic experience. And then during parts of the documentary, some of it's not verite. Some of it's you know a little bit staged, a little bit set up to be like, okay, this is what we need to talk about right now. You know, this is this is what this is the theme, or this is something we need to address right now. So. It was kind of difficult to to figure out when are we in reality and when are we in fiction, even though it's all true. And I think part of my goal in doing that was to really reflect Jerry's mindset because mm. he never knew what was real and what wasn't. And he mm -hmm. all of it was, you know, all of it sounded stranger than fiction and it was stranger than fiction, but it was true. So as he kind of navigates reality due to mental health, due to sort of the CAA kind of, uh, you know, harbinger of Alzheimer's diagnosis, trying to figure out what's going on. We wanted the audience to feel the same way. And, and we had to make these decisions of like, is this documentary or is this fiction or is it somewhere in between? Um, but when, when, when we truly kind of delve into it is when, Jerry decides to tell his family, this is what happened. And not, not, not am I only going to sh uh, tell you, I'm going to show you. Hmm. And we kind of seamlessly move into this film within a film. Well, then let me ask both of you here. Do you both consider yourself more of a documentary filmmaker or more of a cinematic filmmaker? Um. And John, you can answer as well, but I, I think we both have always wanted to be like narrative, uh, cinematic, you know, scripted feature filmmakers. And, you know, everything that we've been doing to up to up to this day has been about, you know, crafting the cinematic language and lighting and acting and directing and, and putting pieces together to sort of give you that cinematic journey. But this story just was so strange and so true that I don't think that a simple, you know, scripted narrative feature would have done it justice. Uh, so we decided we let's 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 bring in the reality to really um, bring the gravitas to the story and give it this like anchor it in this really real world. Um, like the locations and the people, and it's all real and documentary. So, you know, like I said, we, you know, we've always wanted to do scripted and we, and we hope to do that for our next project. But this particular special project was like, it's got to be, it's got to have this documentary element to it. You want to add something? Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, like a lot of filmmakers, we get into uh, this business and this, this sort of, uh, career from like great movies we've watched um and uh you know for me it was things like aliens or indiana jones and shawshank redemption those kinds of things and uh and then like as you as you as i've made films i've always had that sort of like you know i want to make the big blockbuster like fantastical thing and then when you kind of come into the documentary world you realize it's you know, every story can be fantastic. It's and even better because of how authentic and genuine it is. Um, you may not be dealing with uh, aliens or anything like that, but you might still be dealing with the idea of, you know, alienation or like uh, like human sort of, you know, behavior. So, um, you know, in this case, we, we just took the cinematic storytelling visual language and then we applied it to this true authentic story that your dad's story sounds like it sounds like a tall tale like 
I think he had to tell it to me a couple of times for me to understand like this really happened and it wasn't just like something he made up. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and also, you know, I, I think you could appreciate this too. It's like this, th there was something really valuable about this being like a real Asian American family that's, you know, revealing their darkest se secrets. It's kind of never been done before. You know, so there's something about if you were just to make mm. them actors that would like cheapen kind of the impact of the story. Um, so the family willing to tell the story because it's so important was a big factor in, in the creative choices that we made as well. I know usually uh, with any documentary I would ask uh, what lessons to be learned here, but it's very obvious <laughs> in your guys film what you guys want us to take away from this. Yeah. So, uh, so let, let, let me ask you this then, um, where, where is everybody now and uh, how is everybody doing is particularly Jerry? Uh, well, Jerry is, um, he is um, living in Taiwan and he is coming to Park City um, this week. So very excited for that. He's been away for about a year now from the US. And he's doing okay. He's doing great. You know, family really came around, uh, extended family, everyone just really came around to uh, find a way to uh, help help them figure out his next steps. Um, um, and yeah, we're, we're all really excited for him. Um, I can't, I think, I think the lessons and the takeaways from the film uh, are true and resonate and they are, um, you know, how we are taking care of each other at this time uh just just one day at a time uh but you know we're here that you know family's always present so yeah i think that that's terrific and and you guys created an unbelievable story it's particularly the fact that most asian families would just keep this to themselves or too embarrassed to talk about it and you guys made a made a film about this <laughs> <laughs> You know what else, too? I was thinking about this when you were asking, which is like sometimes when we hear about um, our our family's immigration story, sometimes it sounds like an origin story or like a like a myth where it's like I came here with a bag of clothes, like a trash bag full of clothes and ten dollars and I made it. And now you're here like I had a family and you're like, that's impossible. That sounds mythical. But then you know, it was true and it happened. And that's the story of many immigrant stories, uh, uh, origins here in America, chasing that American dream. So I feel like this is just a different part of it, a different, it happened later on for him. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we all have this, I think we all like to look back at our lives and try to find like the meaning, the purpose, the, the origin stories of who we are and and, and and such and yeah glad we had this opportunity with in this documentary to do it most excellent well hey to the both of you i enjoyed this conversation congratulations once again for your film and congratulations uh going to park city i mean this here is technically your guys american dream it's true absolutely yeah. yeah thank you so much thanks so much for taking the time to watch the film and, and talk about it with us um but we're super super excited Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you. You.